Red Bull Wolo Legacy event in Germany, and we are spawning in here on Cauldron. Oh, sick map layout. I love this new map. So we've got one sacred site by the lake. There's three sacred sites, one on the left, one on the right. Got a little bit of that uh, terrain blockage. Both of them have a relatively direct route to the lake. To me, it looks like it's like 1% closer to Kapasha's base, but then there's like a forest kind of blocking. So it pretty much feels dead mm. even. And yeah. there's deep sea fish and shore fish in the center. So quite valuable. Are there deep sea in the middle of that one? I, I thought they were all shoreline. Okay. I can't. Look like it to me, I, but uh, I think they would show up on the mini map if they were. Uh, ah. But we do see a dock. Look at that. We said uh, you could have something goofy here. And look at that dock placement. Since it's all kind of like shallow water, he's able to build that <laughs> like right in the middle of the pond. Yeah, th that's why uh, fish could be in the middle because it like the there's like a sand bank there that brings uh -huh. it up and classifies it as a shore fish. And that is a dock coming in here from our blue player here, which is Koinu. Yep, and uh, uh, oh man, I'm, I'm struggling with the yeah the red and the blue because uh, oh, no, the sorry, French is red. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 Capoche with the the deli. Uh, who has that blue? Yeah, yeah. The, the French blue flag uh, confused me for a sec. Yeah, it's it's all fun and games. Even like we had like the color picker come out, and then last week we had players picking colors, and it can get really confusing really quickly when you're in the casting perspective as far as looking at the two. So so we've got a little more red and blue this weekend. But yeah, interesting to see an opening straight for that middle dock. And I couldn't remember if there was a sacred side in the middle, which there is. A Hulk would cover that sacred side. I believe he could just park one there in the corner and could perhaps hold that, which. Uh, you know, it's always good to have a sacred site under your belt there when we've got uh, Delhi uh, heading out for you. So let's see if uh, we'll ever see that Koinu Hulk Oh, that's a Delhi dock. That's that a Delhi dock. That's what right. we're looking Right, yeah, I confuse you good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> we need to make me green. <laughs> I mean, eventually there might be a Hulk there. It yeah. depends on what There could be a next. Hulk. You know, you never know. Maybe they could, they could purchase one from uh, their French allies. I don't know. <laughs> Conversion. Uh, I, I think, can you convert uh, a Hulk with a? Well, I don't think Delhi could do it, but can can you do that with the Imam? Pre previously, with Imam from Abbasid, you could convert ships. Yes, and about two three patches ago, it got fixed. I got my Aww. YouTube highlight out of it, converting a demo ship from an opponent. Oh uh, my gosh! Danube River, right before they fixed it. So you know, eternal eternal memory. Yeah, I gotta say, out of all the changes, uh, one change I really, really dislike is they took out the ability to hit uh, boats with rams. And I always rams, thought yes. it was so fun. Like the rare chance that a hawk was stupid enough to get close to the shoreline and let you hit it with a hawk. Like as the Abbasid, like how are you gonna kill a, kill a, a hawk in H2 with your ships? You're not going to, but you could maybe hit them with the ram if they're not watching. Yeah, I love that too. I'm sure Adne is working on a mod right now that reinstates some of the most imbalanced shit that we used to have, including <laughs> uh, ramming hawks with rams. Oh boy. Okay, so there we go. We've got uh, age one, of course. Uh, both players heading to age two now, and uh, we've got a little bit of fishing action. Of course, there's deli fishing boats, so those bad boys can fire arrows if you're uh, not careful enough and get close to them. We got wheelbarrow and Q, and uh, we're gonna be heading up to the second age. It looks like is he trying to move the? Oh. <laughs> he was trying to herd these deer close to his town center, and Konyu is just killing them out there in the middle. If if I were Kapash right now, I take those two gold villagers and I kill those two sheep with uh, Control G right click, Control G right click. That's two sheep dead right there that Koinu won't be bringing back. Uh, but at this time, uh, Koinu is mostly focusing on spreading those deer and putting them in less favorable position, less congested. Uh, as of course Kapash was trying to bring those back to his uh, town center. Yeah. So. Uh... Yeah, there isn't a. He's a core is pointing out right now. There is no mosque right now uh, yeah. for Delhi, which is. I mean, he did open with the docks. That might be why. And he, he's had some other wood investments, like he said the dock, the fishing ship, mining camp, lumber camp, houses, and whatnot. Still no mosque. Doesn't have the wood for it. Probably just. Yeah, he's got two fishing boats in production. We're getting survival techniques coming out uh, before wheelbarrow. And just now being able to age up to tier two H2 right as Feudal Age is reached for Koinu. Yep, and uh, we do see a tower being built on the front line, but I'm not sure if it has been spotted out yet. It's and... spotted. We're seeing only Kapash's yeah. vision right now. He knows. Yeah, but how's he going to stop it? He 
he doesn't really have a whole lot of options here. Those those fishing well, boats aren't going to reach it. I think they reach the villager if he moves to the the oh, lower. Oh, can you bank, get close enough? Not... You think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he can kill that. Yeah, he's not he doing right it. There. Yeah, I'm not sure if he sees it. Like I know it's in his line of sight, but oh, he did move to the other side, so he knows it's there. He's just yeah. No, yeah, he's seen it. He's deciding not to try yeah. and deal with it, lose any food gathering time. I mean, it's not threatening every position, so it was really like it's a bit of a risk if he tries to see if he can reach the villager, or he's made a judgment call that he can't. Uh, either way, it's not affected yet his income, and he can yet try to use the food from that lake to springboard his way into, uh, you know, a little bit more of a rich feudal age, and then eventually perhaps end up giving up that lake. Another tower, so... But he's got a lot of food already out of this, like, even if he is pushed off of here. Uh, but, yeah, the sacred site there, there's also two on the side that he can go for, as we see Kapoach just about to hit that second age. There you go. There's that tower being made. The blueprint had been put and now it is visible. He knows about all that. Uh, Kapash is age two. He's starting a scholar, of course. Spearman, Spearman production. Sanctity is coming around. Uh, professional scouts has been queued up over wheelbarrow. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, professional scouts, uh, I guess, obviously looking to go pick up this deer on the map. Not, uh, not going to be too concerned. Sorry. With... sorry, wheelbarrow shows up on the yeah. upper yeah. overlay. Yeah, 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 yeah. gotcha. Yeah, sometimes it, it kind of depends what perspective player it's on at the moment. But uh, look yeah, at this. We got two knights out there in the stealth forest waiting to go on a raid. Oh, he did stop that tower. Okay. He must have it was close enough. It. Yeah. That villager's still alive. Yeah, the range must be like just shy of the villager or something. I don't know. At this time, yeah, he 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 killed the tower. I mean, he stopped the tower. It was oh. remade further away. And now it's out of range. And I like that Kaposh is actually first gathering the fish that are closest to the tower because soon he won't have access to it anymore so he's really min maxing the total output of that lake meanwhile one villager gets killed by koinu nice job see if he can get another no he's gonna move away yep he was able to come in and get that raid basically for free but he, uh free Ooh. but he did lose a knight so one villager for a knight eh, i don't know i think maybe i'd rather have my knight there but uh it does look like his horseman out. He has spearmen with that ta outpost. Looks like it was stopped from going up. He's still been fishing. So you got to think about this. This has been a wood investment for these towers. That really hasn't had a ton of value yet. Yeah, Let, let's take a look at Koinu's base and see what his general development plan is at this time. Uh, if we can take a look at the French base here. He's the French base. Yep, we've got... Uh, yep, right there. <laughs> Yeah, let's, let's see. So we've got one uh, archery range. We've got a barracks and a stable. I still call this to give you anxiety build, the 111. Yeah. Uh, he, he loves his micro. He loves his feudal battles. And that's kind of the setup we've got going here. He's got those towers in the center. He's going to want to shut down that dock at some point, but he would need ramps. And we don't see a blacksmith yet. So no free attack upgrade yet for the knights. Uh, no ability to make ramps. Just focusing on unit production. The, the interesting thing, Fitzbro, he constantly has to map around the center. He cannot just rally units towards Kapash's side of the yeah. map because he would take free fire from the fishing ships. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's really annoying. And it yeah, is, right? It's interesting to see, yeah, such an early barracks there from the French because he knows he's going to be dealing with horsemen. So, yeah, you can't just necessarily go the, the knight archer comp that people just love to do. Sometimes you throw in a few spearmen there is the way to go. But, yeah, got to be careful when rallying all of this infantry he's training to not go run into uh, some Delhi fishing ships. Now he's going to try to finish this again. Look at that. So he's bringing another villager up. How many times has that been? Already twice denied, maybe three times. Yep, so we've got... Uh, I think he's going to... Oh! Will he complete it? He, uh, he got it. He needs a good side, though. <laughs> there we go. He's got it up. Oh, my God. That does a lot of damage on fishing ships. Yes, it's like it does. Four yes, shots. it does. That okay. was close. Oh, one, one fishing ship, not a big deal. So far, still really good management for Kapash. I love this game state he's in. Uh, Sanctity, I believe, is also finished, and he's trying to make a play for the bottom sacred side and the top sacred side. This one was denied by a knight and a scout. Good job by Koino being on top of that. Scholar trying to get away. The knight runs into spears. He will fall, but he did kill the scholar. That's still a good mm -hmm. resource trait for he's Kapash. get this one, too. Nice job by uh, Koino. Yep, so uh, there we go. Uh, looks like he's able to, to stop that tower from going up just at the nick of time, but he did lose a scholar on the other side of the map. 
I th honestly, I think right now you just maybe focus on those two sacred sites to the southeast. Maybe instead of trying to go overextending and trying to get all three at the same time, like he could probably settle for having these two pretty easily and then maybe get this one later. I agree with you. Fitzbro, why wouldn't you get the one that's most safely defended by fishing ships already? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Like, there's, like, literal apples hanging in his face. You could build a wall there, too, space. if you wanted to. Like, a little yeah. wall segment. <laughs> He's got, like, go. fresh apples looking lustrous, juicy, and tasty in front of his face. A nice red hue. And instead, he climbs the tree and takes this shriveled, decayed apple from the top of the tree and one that's not ripe yet and so hard it'll break his teeth. Now finally he's like, yeah, okay, I'll go for the low-hanging fruit. I try to bite off more than I could chew. And, you know, this is the right play, focusing on those bottom two sacred sites. And Koinu's gonna come up. He shows up in force, gets a nice little archer attack mm -hmm. on the spears. Horsemen come forward, but this is the French Zero Knight army. Uh, yeah, he's what? lost what knights he made. And now we have that uh -oh. basic army of archer spear. I think he pulled that with a control group he just loses that scholar for free because he could have stood up there and yeah going against this composition without having archers of his own is quite hard and look at that knight causing some idle time yeah trying to kill the town center by himself <laughs> uh, kind of pull away takes another five arrow hits uh, or so still has uh, enough health uh, koinu doesn't have blacksmith ah oh, there we go koinu finally finishes yeah. his blacksmith now, Core is just pointing out there are no scholars currently garrisoned because he brought them all mid. So as far as his tech time, that's going to be quite slow. And we picking off a few villagers here and there. I don't know. I feel like Konya is starting to get some nice nice map control. He's taking the sacred site. He's dropping down a tower. He could start working on those fishing boats. But, I mean, I think they've done their value, I guess, for now. But Delhi really wants to get these sacred sites. Economy-wise, Kapash is not leading anymore and some of those are fishing ships which are kind of like low value food villagers it's nice to have the extra but of course we do have economy upgrades coming in for kapash he already has several economy upgrades and is getting the next so overall kapash is still gathering more resources even without the sacred sites in moments like these fitzbro would, would you think Let's just forget about the sites and gather gold the old-fashioned way or would you keep trying to hard force uh... a full feudal force I don't know. Like, I I feel like Delhi has to have a certain amount of that sacred site income to keep up with, with the French. Not to mention, he's been losing villagers here and there. Uh, uh, I mean, if you look at that villager count, he's lower villager count. Uh, nice little trade there by Spearman, but yeah, villagers said they're fighting. Uh, like, uh, he seems unaware. Yeah, and then the French, of course, are going to train their villagers faster. And as he's, like, going to be pushed off, it seems, from the... Now, it looks mid. I... I I think Konya is taking that mid, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think that knight did its damage. But yeah, big engagement here, but under two towers. Uh, but yeah, I think Konya has got plenty to kite back under. And steps off of the sacred side. He's got enough scholars to survive arrow fire here, uh, to be sure. But Kapash never has materialized a full capture on a sacred side as of just yet. And that's to the credit of Koinu. Although Koinu has lost knights, he has killed villagers, and that does kind of tend to rack up. If we do a quick survey of the income per minute right now, Koinu is rocking about 1,500 or so, and uh, Kapash is rocking about 1,600. So despite the seven economy differential, the economy upgrades for Kapash have served enough to kind of put them on even footing. Army size slightly bigger for Kapash. Well, we get more knights coming in. If Koinu can keep doing this, even taking mm -hmm. bad knights with knights only killing yeah. two villagers per, that's still going to end up working out well for him. Yeah, especially at this point, as he's like, he's kind of got his economy established. We have knights picking off some... Oh, he's hitting the mining camp. <laughs> yeah. uh... That's a lot of lost damage. A bit awkward. Misclicked on the mining camp. Didn't kill any villagers just yet. You know what? I think he was maybe trying to deal with this raid back at home. Um, or maybe not. I don't know. Because that does seem like a weird little misclick. No, I think you're right. And, you know, sometimes when you click in the fog of war, that you don't see the villagers, but it's easy for your cursor to snap towards the mining camp. Mm -hmm. Okay, we looks like that, that, that forward tower has been upgraded with arrow slits and its stone. But that's a lot of scholars, and don't underestimate the, the healing these guys uh, will dish out. Not to mention, you can heal with the attack move now as we got big engagement. Horsemen moving in, getting a complete surround on the French archers uh, as the, the, the archers back at the, on the north side are being healed by the scholars. But I'm wondering if they're actually getting healing off as, I guess, that archer mask could probably one-shot a lot of units. Like, I don't know if it, how effective it is when you're just healing straight-up archers. 
Well, he was trying to kill scholars. It took him about 10 volleys to take down three <laughs> scholars, and he's working on the final three scholars. There's the fourth scholar going down. Really good target fire by Koinu. Uh, when he was just kind of random firing, it wasn't working. It was getting healed out. But he's killed four out of the six scholars. Meanwhile, uh, those knights are doing some good buffering. They're taking a lot of Ari, uh, arrow volleys. And another scholar goes down. Honestly, this is a fantastic defense by Koinu. Yep, so we've got uh, Kapoch falling back now. Yeah, and losing all those scholars, like, that was his, like, healing death ball, right? He had all of the scholars yeah. pulled out. No more research going on. He's got, well, he's got a decent amount of tech. Some are still being worked on. But I feel like from here, Konyu is just going to keep raiding. He's up on villagers. We say that as he's raiding right now, although running straight into Spearman there. Uh, with 3 HP, that one goes down. But I don't know. For Delhi, he does have one Sager site to the northwest. I guess. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Look at that gold count. Yeah, it's a lot. It's because he started, uh, I think uh, Kapaz started to prepare for uh, an eventuality where he would never ever get a sacred site. So he started to put a lot of villagers on gold and then he got a sacred site towards the left side. So now he's got too much gold and he hasn't fixed his gold income yet. And you know, it, it's fine if you have that much gold, you can prepare for like a bunch of elephants at h3 but the food isn't quite there yet suddenly his food spikes up i feel like maybe he cancelled a bunch of units and he's looking to go castle but this could yep. be a problem if koino uses that to do an attack because uh, koino shows no intent to go to h3 mm -hmm. honestly if he's playing if he's planning to go to h3 i think he should throw a few wall segments down and just delay because that will buy him some time like there's a choke right there at the friend's base he could he could uh could stop like, I don't know, that's usually when, I, when I'm when i going to H3 and know there's an army bearing down on me, like, buy some time. The gold bank has evaporated for uh, Kapash. He's used his market to buy the rest of the food, now goes for H3. He's not got on those the walls line. he talks about. <laughs> yeah, compound of the defender in front has currently no resource bank whatsoever. No wood for walls, no, no resources for anything, really. Yeah, well, compound of the defender with no stone is certainly interesting. Yeah, and while you can, can of course train those man arms and those lancers and elephants, you don't get your upgrades right away, right? So as far as his spearmen, archers, horsemen, anything he has on the map, those upgrades are gonna take a long time to come in. And remember, he's been losing scholars, so he I think maybe has two inside there right now. He's training more up. Zero. But, he's got yeah. zero currently studying. Oh the yeah, because they're, they're they're out on the map. It looks like. I think he owns two, and he has. Wait, the, the feather is how many? Up there. I'm looking at the top right at the thing the Kapoch. It looks like he has three, I think, but I don't know if they're inside. We could look at that mosque and we'll know for sure. But either way, he sees that age up. Yeah, they're inside military buildings. That's what's going on. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so they're inside stables. They're inside archery ranges. None of them researching anything. And he's starting those researches. But right now, what he needs are knights and, and crossbows or archers. He's making archers, making veteran archer upgrade. That's never going to finish in any relevant period of time. And this is a very well meticulously uh, timed attack from Koinu, looking to capitalize on the Yes, Delhi is H3, but cannot actually use it yet. He's just running straight through the town center, trying to get as many kills as he can before they get that value upgrade of veterancy. Yep, we've got these archers being chased down. It's going to take a long time before he gets that upgrade. And also, he could fall back and take out... Oh, now hold on a second. Horseman getting a nice little surround here. Okay. And uh, yeah, suddenly Delhi looking okay to take this fight as the knight count isn't too large. Uh, he's focusing now on those remaining knights and his horsemen are going to do, uh, just keep chasing. I'm assuming maybe he has some efficient production on his stable. I mean, a, a lancer or two could be pretty good here. Uh, one lancer is in production for Kapash. Koino, of course does have the gold right now, but not even close to being able to go to H3 at this time. Villager count, pretty good for Koinu. He managed to get a small lead, picked off a couple of uh, villagers there, but his army supply just absolutely plummeted. We get this late farm transition mm -hmm. that's not really being enabled by any kind of large wood bank. There's still a sacred site here. This might be the equalizer map. Kapash yeah. is looking pretty hot, Fitzbro. I feel like this is a pivotal moment in this game right now. Now there's a, a 10 villager difference, right? Koinu's up, but uh, we have a Delhi army that's online, French being pushed back, and when Delhi has a little bit of an advantage, what do they take? Those sacred sites. He could also pop out and go and grab those relics, although if last game was the indicator, these guys kind of take their time on <laughs> grabbing the relics. We do see one of those cheaper compound defender keeps being dropped on the first sacred site in the middle right now. And 
keeps in feudal, <laughs> they're pretty much a no-go zone. Like, there's no way that Koinu can attack into keeps. Yeah. And he's looking like he's going to go for a little bit of raid, so... Kaboj could be fine here. I, I would focus on getting my techs, get the scholars garrison and uh, the moss, get those techs online, and then get the, uh, or actually maybe you can grab those relics first. Oh, if you, yeah, I think that's good. And he started to pick up one relic, but Koino is setting up for his own castle age. He's got mm -hmm. double center as well. You add up the fact that he denied the dock. He killed a bunch of villagers. He's, of course, behind on eco upgrades, but Koinu is looking to have more income despite everything else relatively soon with a 14 villager lead, despite being up against one sacred site. Now, if Kapash gets three sacred sites, that's going to delay the period of time where Koinu actually takes economic superiority for quite some time. And mm. in addition to that, Kapash has nearly three times the army size. Yep, and this is the Royal Institute, so that's not going to be the Guild Hall or anything like that as far as late game goes. We've seen Royal Institute all the time as far as his upgrades. We could keep shooting back on each other. Has not queued up his text yet, but I'm sure he will soon. Those take a long time. By the way, it's a little secret. You can do that Mosque Wi-Fi. Build that Mosque next year keep if you want to try to get those texts uh, anytime during your current game, because they take quite some time. <laughs> Yeah, and would you go for the boiling oil or the village fortresses at this time? <sighs> you know, first, I've been going for boiling first? oil a lot because that's just a, such a massive upgrade. Like, I, I, I don't know, it, but I find that most of the times, honestly, when I start doing the keeps, I have multiple and I just queue them both. <laughs> so I don't know if I really make just that decision a whole lot. Yeah. yeah. It'd be great to get another keep out on the left side on that big mm -hmm. gold next to the sacred side and start yeah. some village fortresses. Uh, we get the Royal Institute. Uh, did he immediately start an upgrade? Yep, he did. That which uh, Kapash didn't do last game, Koinu did immediately jump on top of that Royal Bloodlines upgrade. 490 gold, 35% bonus health for the Knights. They are Royal Knights right now. Doesn't have the veterancy, doesn't have the cantled saddles uh, just yet. But he does have that Bloodlines coming in. Archers moving in, Kapoch having a nice little... Oh, oh. <laughs> Scholars, where are you going? They're on the front line, but they're going to heal. It's okay. They're just, they're tanks. That's what they're doing. They're tanking. <laughs> they're really cheap. They're just 75 gold tanks. Totally fine to put them in front. Uh, rather large health pools with all those uh, upgrades that they get, the piety and whatnot. Uh, and we have another... Yeah, we have the village fortresses coming out first and the first uh, tower elephant. Oh, I hate when this happens. <laughs> it's so obnoxious getting your relics in with Delhi because it's like half the time they jump inside a building and they're still holding the relic and you don't know where the relic went or they're just standing there. Yeah, yeah. And, and then the, the, there are still more accessible relics uh, if he goes and finds them. But there's, you know, it's, there's a lot of different things to do right now. No veteran knights yet. You think he's forgetting it? I mean, now he doesn't have the gold for it anymore. He's getting canceled saddles before mm. he gets <laughs> veteran Yeah, he just knights. canceled it. He just canceled it. So I think he realizes he needs some gold. And he's been pushed off that kind of like southern one. Now look good for stone. Is he trying to just drop a defensive keep? I think that's what he's I doing. Guess so. Yeah, or unless Probably. that's the spring gold upgrades. But I think that's going to be a defensive keep. Picking up one of the relics there. We've got two relics currently uh, captured for Kapoch. There's been some raiding in the base of Kapoch while all this has been going on here and there. But here we go. Our first tower elephant. And I see villagers coming across the map to drop another key. Yeah, Kapoch has insane map control right now. Double sacred site. For some reason, doesn't have the center sacred site yet. <laughs> yeah. Which we he thought really was a doesn't like that one. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't, does not like it. I thought that was his strategy this whole time. He hasn't taken it once. The tower has been dealing with it, though can't right now uh showing like hey still doesn't have the veteran knight upgrade but coin has got more problems than that he's Ooh. relatively low on gold income a lot of he just he can't get his army supply up i thought he was gonna power through there and lose a few more of it he did lose some villagers so looking at the count it is quite different but we got sacred sites we got relics and a, a strong delhi army we see a cape being counter cape being dropped there uh by uh, Konyu, I almost wonder, like, do you just drop a trebuchet and just make him spin through the remaining stone he has and just sit here for a while? Or Kapash? Yeah, I mean, so that keep's going to go online, but I don't think he's going to have the stone to keep it up because that stone is almost out. Confirm doesn't have the stone. So, yeah, we'll see. There, there is a big stone on the left side outside that mm -hmm. wall, but yeah. yeah, you're right. When there are two keeps like this, 
you do just want to start trebuchet uh, pressure. And Koino mm -hmm. is already starting that. He's getting his own counterweight trebuchet. Uh, Kapash might just be relying on elephants. Though, you know, elephants, they are siege tools, but they still have a lot less DPS than rams. And even rams don't deal with keeps that well. So I'm not sure how how good that is going to be. Oh my gosh, the most frustrating thing I've been having right now, so like a siege obviously has less HP, is rams against China. China, I think I think it was the game I was playing against you. Like your tower and keep just killed my ram and was before I like even got in distance. And I'm like, what in the world is this? Like, <laughs> they just get destroyed. I get so... I get so disappointed by rams once someone made a keep and I'm like, I'm going to overreact and overinvest. I know this is ridiculous, but I just want to deal with it. Keeps are pretty strong. So I'll drop six to seven rams. Surely that will deal with the keep. No. Nope. Spoiler. It did not. <laughs> now, look at this. He was trying to, just, to drop a defensive keep here, but the knights got there just in time. I think he kind of realizes that front line is going to be a little bit of trouble and is trying to do some more damage to the economy. And this is going to do a lot of damage. Those are a lot of knights, and he's, he doesn't have a whole lot back at home to really stop this. It, he could idle, kill some villagers here. This is going to be some good economic value. Just now, I'll pick it up that third sacred site, by the way. I'll tell you what, Fitz, bro. You said he doesn't have a lot at home to stop this. He doesn't have a lot, period, to stop this. Look at his army composition. Seven knights, archers. 26 archers, five crossbows, three uh, tower elephants. Nothing really deals with knights. Where are the spears? I, I kind of, like, thought for a second he was just going to try to do the, the classic, like, elephant scholar death push into the French base, but not a ton of scholars. I mean, he has seven scholars, but I don't think they're all on the front line. Yeah, these knights are just causing so much economic damage right now. Look at Capocha's food. I love it. This is a very inspired counterattack. Breaking through the death wall, it can feel so constrictive to be against triple sacred side, three, four keeps, but he's found a way through and has managed to deal lasting damage. 102 villagers against 58 still yeah. dropping. Koinu takes the economic advantage. Well, and it now. felt like Kapoch had such map control and like he was bearing down and raiding, but then Koinu's like, uh -oh. fine, I'm just going to run by with all my knights. And he's done so much economic damage that if he can just I mean, if he cleans this fight i would imagine that would likely be uh, a, a good chance of this being gained for him because he's got the economy that his opponent does not i'm very impressed just three minutes ago fitzbro koinu had 19 army supply he still didn't have his veteran archers and actually he's uh, veteran knights he still doesn't <laughs> yeah, those knights are like Part feudal, part imperial. Why? <laughs> is, is it just because he just is saving? The, he doesn't want to spend the gold, I guess? He doesn't have a ton no, no. of them? Or he has 10, no, though. He, he's forgotten. 100% he's forgotten. How can you forget? They look so different when they're upgraded. <laughs> how, how do they look when they're upgraded? They just look I, They just look like, like badasses. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and these look kind of bland. No, I know what you mean, but like, if I had to draw it, I, I would not be able to, even though when you see them side by side, you're like 100% sure of it. Yeah, let's get up paint after this ground, and uh, we'll both draw what we think the veteran uh, knights <laughs> look like, and I'm sure it'll be great. <laughs> How much health do these have? I'm not sure that I ever see feudal imperial knights. Let's let's look at the French. Oh, he's getting it! Quick, quick, please, Observer, click at Knights. I want to see how much health they have. It's 35% extra on 190, so mm. that should be quick mass, 240, uh, 256, okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so there's Knights getting their upgrades finally, and yes, there's that stone you mentioned. He might grab it. He has done that, and uh, I think that Elephant Army, you can see on the minimap, is push positioning to push in, but... Doesn't want to like just push right into a keep. It's not gonna be able to. So those elephants just really aren't getting the value they want. I, I'm telling you, I think he's going for the elephant death ball, but he needs to keep his scholars, and I feel like he needs some more elephants than this. But I don't know. I know what those elephants could do. Maybe some spears as well, because these knights yeah. have actually reached full castle age lethality at this time. Uh, as for Kapash, his villager count is absolutely mushrooming like this is insane 78 he's using those village fortresses fortresses yeah. uh, for extra villager production isn't he he must i, I think he is I don't, I don't know if he's got more town centers out there we see the knights coming in <laughs> he say that as he's now losing more villagers uh, unfortunately yeah. underneath that town center the sacred site has been stopped so no sacred site victory in queue for now now here's what i'm concerned about and those elephants in the front line, that, that mass is growing and he can get all the raids he wants, but when 20 Dumbos come to town, you're going to be in trouble. 
Yeah, getting some Demista vibes from this kind of army where everything seems to be falling apart around him, but he's got this one strong army, this one chance to ram the ring into Mount Doom and try to finish it all. He, forward come the elephants. There is a blossoming uh... of army for Poinu, but can Kapoch push through? It looks tough. Yeah, I mean, I, did, I don't never underestimate Scholar healing, but that's a lot of crossbows. Oh, oh. This, is, this is a fatal blow to his economy. Those elephants, I can't tell. Has he lost any yet? I don't I don't think nope. so. Oh, nope. Manganels, though. Five. Manganels, now they can cause a lot of problems because they, they cause the Scholars to spread out their healing and pro high-ups not heal a, an elephant that goes down right now. See the crossbows falling back. That keep keeps just so much damage. Elephants can't just take keeps head on like this. You have to take them down first or like target it very quickly. Kind of just ignoring the keep, honestly. <laughs> just trying to ignore the elephant in the room, which is kind of ironic since he's the one with the elephant. It's dealing so but, much uh, damage. One elephant goes down, second elephant goes down. Uh, the keep, is it full? Is it a full keep? Uh, I don't know if that keep is fully stuffed. It doesn't yeah, look like know. it's fully stuffed. Yeah, that thing's got plenty of HP right now. <laughs> Nothing inside. Yeah. Would have been worth maybe to put uh, all those archers inside to <laughs> no, get more fire. Look at fire. that scholar. Look at that scholar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so broken. This is some kind of, <laughs> this is some kind of thick religious ritual of self-castigation where <laughs> scholars are trying to take damage to prove their faith to their god and they're just going to heal out the pain and stay alive, but sometimes they just go a bit too far and the scholars go down. The ultimate sacrifice for their deity. Well, Kapash is pushing through. There is a lot of villager diff, though. He's got 53 against 116. Army supply, though, more than triple. I don't know who's gonna win. Is it the militarist? Is it the uh, economist? What do you think? Well, remember when I said never underestimate the elephant elephants? What do you have? Four, was that four elephants? Four, maybe five elephants in that fight? It was and five. They sat underneath a keep firing that entire time. Now he's lost his scholar, so, you know. The secret weapon there of the deli has, has been a little bit neutralized. But yeah, the, the real sacrifice has been the villagers of Kapoch back at home. Yeah, the friends we lost along the way is the <laughs> real sacrifice here. Yeah, I, if he can, maybe if he had picked up some villagers raised during that. Now, look at that. Uh, Konyu is out on the map on the northwest corner getting plenty of gold. Um, so maybe oh. like he thinks he's starving him, but he's got plenty of <laughs> continuing to heal. Continuing the self-castigation, very devoted individuals here. And like, yeah, like you said, this gold has been reclaimed. Kapash is none the wiser. Yeah, and uh, I think this is going to survive for like a little bit longer here. But now Konya can just really start to turn on the rating. I mean, he's already done so much economic damage and now those elephants are gone. I mean, I don't know how he's going to turn this around. I love that horseman attack, recognizing that for the time being, the elephants lacked the chaperones, the elephant trainers that mm -hmm. have been guarding them this far. And like, hey, if I make a couple of horsemen, then I can take down those elephants. They are the best counter to tower elephants. Spearmen do the most damage, but horsemen have the mobility to back it up so that they don't get kited to death. If there aren't too many spears, a couple of surgical horsemen can really take down elephants and he just took down 2,000 resources of elephants against someone that had been pushed heavily in their villager count. I think that fight might have gone way differently if he had neutralized that French uh, that French keep before that. Now we talk about konyu has been up on villagers right but like he had a ton of villagers on the stone because he had to to keep repairing uh, but he was unable to kill this keep it, it like sure they were healing through it but he could have just been dealing raw damage to everything else if that keep hadn't been uh, online during that. Very impressed here with Koinu. He's getting his trebuchets and his mangonels out. That's a lot of horsemen. He's trying to get an elephant there. Running it forward with those horses. It looks like Koinu may actually go up. I was so sure Kapash was going to win this game, Fitzbro. I thought there for a second as he kind of cornered him, but <laughs> honestly, Kavoch kind of uh, ignored his villagers back at home. Like At first, yeah. it was like, okay, it's just one raid. It was like, okay, that's a lot of raid. That's even more raid. <laughs> and it's like, okay, is he... It, it felt like he was really invested in this elephant death push, but it it didn't finish... You know, it wasn't a fatal blow at all. He, did, he killed the army and didn't kill any of the buildings. True. Boiling oil is about to come through. Will the keep burn down first or will it research boiling oil first? Uh, <laughs> I don't think he got it, right? I don't no, it's think so. There. It's still there. It's, it's not going to take seven like minutes, six. but it's almost done. Yeah. But will he remember to click it? Mm, probably not. 
Okay, so we got trebuchets online and mangonels. Look at that. That key's going to be going down so quickly. This is going to be uh, Konya just marching across the middle of the map. Um, with Honestly, there's a little bit of back and forth in this game. I thought when uh, Kaboch hit the Castle Age and kind of seemed like he stabilized and then started taking the map, that perhaps he was just going to... Like, imagine if he had stonewalled that left side or something crazy like that, which he could yeah. have with his Spearmen. Uh, that would have kept him off gold at least. And maybe he thought he was denying him from gold more than he did. But now these elephants, they're going to be... Uh, how many scholars does he have there? Maybe he could do okay. I, I never underestimate elephants. <laughs> they're winning this fight, yeah. Those armory tree are good, but our elephants are one of the few things that really dominate armory tree and castle age. They really so... dominate everything. <laughs> yeah. uh, this looks pretty decent, though. Mangonels will do quite well against tower elephants as well. He hasn't lost any elephants yet, just the smaller army. You know, I watched a lot of... We had a few Delhi games last week and we were casting. In every game, it always felt like... It seemed like Delhi was doing so good, and then they just slowly run away with their elephants into GGing out. And I think what you said is actually the key. It seems so simple, and it's probably one of the most annoying backseats you hear when you've lost the game, but the answer often seems the same. Just wall, lol. <laughs> just wall a lol <laughs> because on the left side yeah like you said if, if he had done two stone walls on the left side to keep that sacred side alive stop some of those raids that might have just done it for kapash but right now koino is doing the death push yeah i mean i don't even know if like is there a point you go for town centers or whatever or just really focus on getting those villages village fortress villager production uh but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I And then pushing into that keep, like what happened over there, just it just didn't work out. We've got the defensive keep, I guess he was forced to make because of the raids. There's another defensive keep. So he's still got more fight in him. Uh, he's going to be turtling back, but this is going to be a challenging fight as there is a lot of siege online and he's got a forward base as well. Maybe even a keep in his own farmlands could have helped save him some trouble uh, at some point. If he doesn't want a wall because he decides the map is just too open, one or two keeps at home sounds simpler than it is of course because you can't cover everything might have done it uh but now it is uh, koino using his superior mobility i gotta say it was really inspired the way that he constantly used those night counter attacks while still keeping a sizable force to defend against the main elephant push early trebuchet production he got ahead of the curve he got ahead of the trebuchet keep wars and yeah, Koinu, honestly, he's deserving of the position he's in. Going to Imperial now <laughs> with Red Goddess on in his face! Front line. Oh man. The flex. Ah, uh, you I hate to see that. that but <laughs> <laughs> you love to see it. Uh, he's gonna get it up. And then maybe this is like, okay, man, it's time to resign. And like, would you, if you see that Red Palace get completed in your base, uh, I mean, I think you just about know uh, all hope is lost. They call it the Red Palace because the opponent has shame-faced red cheeks as they see that going up inside their own base. There we go. Let's fire the Armin Tree. Let's get oh, inside gosh. and unleash all holy hell on the opponent. <laughs> this thing is insane. Yeah, he, good luck taking that down. The elephant's falling. Oh, <laughs> massacre. <laughs> Those elephants went down like paperweights in a hurricane. Look at that. It's a <laughs> So it's going to be game number two dropping, uh, closing out here at Konya with the French victory, making this best of five, a 2-0 lead. But Konya having the opportunity to perhaps advance here in the next game, but maybe Kapoch will have a surprise for him. And this, this game felt a lot like one of Salami's stupid challenges on stream where it's like, <laughs> don't make any units, just rush like a seven minute red palace in the opponent's base. And then you're kind of laughing until you're not and you're seeing there's Arbalest firing and you're like, hey, I need to take this seriously. My main base is dying to this damn thing. And uh, But of course, this was a much more normal game without Tom Foolery, but still a really cool way to finish it. Red Palace in Kapash's face. And I'm impressed. Uh, many of you may be familiar with Koinu uh, and his alter ego, uh, his alter name, his alternate name, Cy Arc. But to me, completely new. I'm seeing him for the first time and he has now done a really impressive job against Kapash. I'm a fan. I think he's playing great. He's locking it down. and He's got a very deserved 2-0 lead in this uh, round of 16 match.